night state of the nation like address a dramatic announcement to change the constitution the dust is now settling around president Cyril ramaphosa's statement we wanted to get some perspective from rolf mayer who co-wrote the 1996 amendment many of you may remember him as a key negotiator at cadessa he went head to head with ramaphosa and they became friends mayer served as minister of constitutional development and is now the director of the in transformation initiative and i spoke to him earlier on this is what he had to say hello Rolf Mayer good to have you with us on tonight with Jane Dutton this announcement by Cyril Ramaphosa the president do you think it was premature considering what still needs to be done I don't necessarily think so what he was doing is actually to speak on behalf of the ANC after the ANC La Chotla and so he made the statement clearly in his capacity as president of the ANC and alluded to the fact that this is a proposal coming from the party, from the ANC, that they will take to Parliament. Uh, so uh, obviously there's a, there's a little bit of, uh, of a mixed role there. But, uh, but I think it's, it's up for every party to, to speak out and say what it thinks about the current land debate and what it uh, reads from the hearings that so far have been conducted. Uh, other parties have come up with their proposals already, so I think it's uh, it's fair. But, but obviously it holds a, a lot more gravitas considering he is the president. And I'm wondering what happens now. I mean, does the constitution need to be changed in order to progress the land issue? Well, what he says, if I write, read it correctly, is that there will be a proposal for a possible amendment of the constitution. But I think there are considerations that might make it unnecessary. Uh, various jurists have alluded to the fact that the Constitution, in terms of its current position, Section 25, and particularly subsection uh, 8 of that uh, section, uh, allows for expropriation without compensation. But I, I think at the same time, you know, there's a lot of emotion about the subject. We've heard what has what have been said during the various hearings and other debates that took place around the country. Uh, and, and we have to be uh, conscious of the fact that people are sensitive, people are emotional about the issue of land. I think it reflects basically on the fact that we have a huge uh, inequality gap in South Africa and land is one of the issues that come forward in that, in that debate. Uh, but we have to essentially look at how we can close the inequality gap. Okay. And that can only be done through economic growth and, and development. All right, let's pick a little through what he said last night, and I want you to listen to this. The ANC will, through the parliamentary process, finalize a proposed amendment to the Constitution that outlines more clearly the conditions under which expropriation of land without compensation can be effected. The intention of this proposed amendment is to promote redress, advance economic development, increase agricultural production and food security. It will also transform the unjust spatial realities in urban areas. What sort of clarification do you think he needs? I think the, the, the question at hand is, what, what is the purpose of a constitution? In my mind, it is an enabling document. It doesn't prescribe, it doesn't specify policies. And, and Section 25, like the rest of the Bill of Rights in Chapter 2 of the Constitution, speaks to the various rights that individuals of Africans um, has as far as our daily business is concerned in respect to a whole range of social issues. And, and land is, is one of them, but it very specifically enabled also the uh, expropriation of land without compensation through subsection 8. Uh, but it is, like I said, it is an enabling provision. And, and maybe, you know, what, what the President is now alluding to is to, to make it more specific to say exactly under which circumstances it can be done or it should be done. So that is possible that that, that a kind of amendment can actually clarify the position. Some arguments that we've heard in recent times is that the expropriation bill, which is also currently uh, before Parliament, should be more specific in terms of, of this process of expropriation. 
if it's included in the Constitution under Section 25, it, it can serve the same purpose. Okay, so, so, so sorry, I'm going to jump in here mind, quickly. I'm uh, not concerned. Okay, I mean, what is it that he wants changed, though? Is it the wording of the Constitution? Is that going to help him get what he wants? Um, I, I think if, if I understand it correctly, and <laughs> obviously I, I was not part of the discussion that led to this, I can only try to interpret. Mm. But my, my interpretation is that uh, what, is, what is intended to, to happen is that Section 25 be clarified to say what it exactly intends to do, and in, in, in other words, to, to bring in a, a clearer context for the enabling provision that it that is meant to, that it is meant to be, uh, and 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 then the president goes further, and and part of the the quote refers to that in terms of what he said in the statement. He makes very specifically use of the concept of equitable um, uh, uh, distribution of land, and in 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 that way it means, and, and the constitution uses the same phrase. It means fair and impartial. Uh, and, and I think it could well be that we have a better description of a, or a clearer description of what uh, those words mean. Okay, so but fair and impartial. Fair and if uh, I can put impartial, this to you. I think, are very clear terms. Okay, so clearly not threatening property rights at this stage. And I'm wondering, considering the work that you have on the land issue, the sort of dealings you have with farmers. Where farmers fit in here? Have they been part of the problem? Will they be used as part of the solution now? I, I think farmers have already indicated that across the country in all uh, sectors of, of the agricultural environment have indicated their willingness to cooperate, to collaborate in a broad sense in, in making this happen. I mean, where we find ourselves today, and that is, the, that is the unfortunate situation, is that too little progress has been made with the whole subject of land reform and land redistribution during the last 25 years. Uh, what was intended by the Constitution has not been fulfilled. It's not been implemented. And now we suddenly find ourselves in a situation where people are looking up and saying, it's the Constitution's fault. It's not. It's not the Constitution that is at fault. It is the fact of implementation that didn't take place. So if it's not the Constitution's fault, this is what fault, is now being addressed. Why the need to change the Constitution? I mean, are there dangers there? Again, depending what the wording is and depending what is put in or taken out. I think it's a, it, it, the, 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 the way we find ourselves today is the need for a whole range of activities that need to take place. And the President refers to that in his statement. He says farmers need to be helped with, with tools and equipment and tractors and fertilizer and, and what, before the rain, rainy season starts. I think those are very specifics that should have been attended to in the past already. And, and things like that all can be done already through existing commercial farmers. And to my mind and my experience going around the country, talking to farmers, consulting with them. There's a great willingness to do this. And, and you know, we have to bring them, them, the minds together on how this can be expedited and done in such a way that all can, be bene that all can benefit uh, from the situation. So if the Constitution has to be amended, it's to make the situation clearer as far as the existing enabling provision is concerned. But what is more important to my mind is the fact that that we have to enable people who want to farm to come forward and say, here we are, we can help you. And the state has to take its responsibility. And do you think it'll differ when it comes another to... Question because excuse me, jumping in here, there's a bit of a delay. Uh, when it comes to subsistence farmers or commercial farmers, will there be different rules? Should there be different rules? The vast majority of people that, that uh, want to farm, I think, are actually people who first of all want to take care of their own existence. Mm. And so subsistence farmers are, are very important in this process. That is where the majority will, will come in. But, but the next step also for them would be to try or to, to start uh, producing uh, for the market. And, and, and that will uh, be an enabling uh, process. So the, the, the kind of help and the kind of support that uh, that need to be uh, 
directed in this regard will be different from existing commercial farmers or people who are emerging into the commercial farming business. Uh, but lots of help are already being given. Uh, for instance, Grain South Africa. I've looked at their, at their uh, way of, of assisting uh, subsistence farmers and, and from there becoming commercial farmers. It's magnificent what is already being done in that regard. Unfortunately, it's, <laughs> it's often being neglected because, uh, because we don't uh, highlight the, the processes that are underway already. Mm. But the, I think the key point is if, if, if we can follow through on what the President has said last night and doing all of this, and there are a whole variety of, of very substantial um, contributions that, that farmers, that the government, that the financial sector by means of, of, of financial support and others can make. And, and where, do, can, where do his comments, agriculture. excuse me, where do his comments sit when it comes to urban land and he was talking about transforming spatial reality in urban areas. What exactly does that mean? I, I, th I think if I again can interpret, uh, in, in my mind the vast majority of South Africans actually would like to have a piece of land where they can, <laughs> can call it their own. It's a matter of identity. And the vast majority of South Africans who live in urban areas uh, are, uh, have settled on land that they don't have ownership of. In many cases it belongs to local authorities and in the other cases it belongs to others who are exploiting uh, the, the, the people on, on land that they are the owners of. And I think this is Well, that will call for an effort because we, it will first of all mean that land will have to be surveyed for the sake of, of uh, in, in ensuring that title deed or a similar type of, of uh, ownership can be, uh, can be uh, directed and can be made possible for people, particularly in urban areas, in townships. Uh, but also in, in the rural communities where people might first of all would like to have uh, a piece of land that is maybe the size of a smaller holding. But the, the uh, EFF, and, if and I can bring them in, say that together. title deeds are not the way to go and obviously this is an issue that's very important for them. They've thrived on it. Do you think they have a point there and what about their call for the state to step in? Yeah, I, I, you know, obviously there are different opinions about the whole question of the usage of land and, 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 the, and the value of land and the way in which we can actually make land available to the vast majority of South Africans. Uh, and, and there are differences of opinion, different policy positions on this. Um, I'm not saying title deed is the only way. There are other ways indeed. And some jurors are working on, on, on proposals that can be considered in this regard. But let's come back to the question that you asked earlier, and that is where does the solution lie? I, I think as far as the whole subject of land is concerned, we have to look at how we can concentrate policy decisions um, in, a single, uh, in, a, in a single agency of a kind at government level where this can be done. Part of the problem today is that land uh, has been addressed by a variety of, of departments, no less than five, I think, if you look at all of them together. And I think part of the problem that, that we're seeing today is the fragmentation of decision-making or not decision-making or no decision-making. So, so the idea of, a, of uh, as a starting point, of a land commission is maybe something that should be considered by the state and, and implemented very soon and, and on an urgent basis because the whole discussion about land is, is coming over a period of time. And can it's not can going I just away. ask you the problem is not going a away. question briefly because we have run out of time, sadly. Uh, you know Sora Ramaphosa for a long time. And I'm just wondering 
what you can tell us about his feelings then and you know I know you're guessing now when it comes to land and also how big an election issue is this for him and that's possibly why he made that statement now um, well you know I can't speak for the president at this kind uh, at this at this moment uh, he is in a he's in a difficult situation on a challenge in, in a challenging situation on a daily basis with a whole range of 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 difficult subjects that he has to account for and and I'm not in that space I can sit here as a as a as a as a, as a commentator uh, at best and that's all but I think from what I know, the president's views would be is that he is looking, first of all, at the, at the interests of South Africans at large, uh, all sectors of society, all communities. And, and I think he has expressed himself in the last months uh, on a variety of occasions very specifically about his interests in that regard and how we would like to see South Africa going forward. So, so I, my, my inclination would be to say I think he has South Africans uh, at large, at heart, in the first instance, that uh, of course he has to look at his political backing. Uh, that is obviously important. That counts for all politicians under all circumstances and in all countries around the world. And he will obviously look at how he can ensure uh, he gets the necessary support in the next election to take him forward and to get a mandate to to do what he believes is right and good for the country. If he hasn't got that mandate, then there's, there's, no, uh, there's no hope. Rolf Mayer there a little earlier on. Now, some women say the justice system has failed them. So how do they go from marching in the streets today for women's rights to real change? That's what we're discussing next. This is Tonight with Jane Dunn.